Hello, my name is Toby Thompson. I'm here today with Shazad Arakzai, DBA student here at Cranfield School of Management. Shazad, you're looking at public-private, project-based, uh, project-based learning uh, aspects of your DBA. Explain more about your topic. Well, um, it took me about nine months to explain it to my supervisor, uh, so I'll try to be a bit brief. Uh, what I'm looking at is really the interaction between private and public sector, uh, which is ongoing since I've been involved in that particular part of the world. Uh, one of the things I've noticed is that the lack of knowledge sharing between the two entities. It does exist, uh, it is not acknowledged, and it is not known uh, as far as the government sector is concerned. The so the private sector, sector have a lot of knowledge which you want as a public sector, but they're not handing it over to you? Uh, that's correct. Handing it over is probably a different way of saying it. They're not aware that they're supposed to share that knowledge with us. And you're not having that knowledge means what? Um, it has obviously a significant impact on our inner core competencies. Uh, it has led to our continuous dependence on the private sector as well, which in a way is a good thing. But at the end of the day, the government is planning to invest a huge amount uh, in, in capital infrastructure development. Uh, it's spread from now until 2021 as, as far as the plans are currently existing. Um, the strategic plan for the investment to keep on going is up till 2032. Uh, and given, given these time scales, given the amount, which is quite significant, um, the government sector has a desire uh, to, to be able to have internal resources, uh, hence cut down the efficiencies, and hence attrib uh, contribute to the strategic objective of the government as a whole, which wants to be one of the uh, topmost uh, five governments in the world in the coming very near future. So, no wonder it took a while to explain to the supervisors. There's many things here. There's public-private. Yes. There's cultural, linguistic, knowledge transfer across large infrastructure projects. It's worth saying you're involved in a very large infrastructure project in UAE. How then do you focus that in your research? Is it a series of questions? Yes. Uh, initially, what I'm trying to do is to really pin it down and try to understand how the individuals learn within a project. Uh, that's my first step. Uh, once I do that, once I'm able to um, pinpoint the characteristics of uh, such a dynamic, then I'll test it. Uh, as such in a frontier market, which is where I'm coming from. Because all the known characteristics of project-based learning are primarily focused on two specific things. One is the private sector, which is obviously not my interest. And second is the developed market, which is again not my operating environment. So I'll have those characteristics tested in a frontier market within a public entity and a public utilities entity because the dynamics are slightly different within a public utility entity project and a normal project within a public sector and hence see what are the differentials, if any. So it's almost a frontier project, in a sense, uh, the DBA project. In its project. own right it is, yeah. yes. And how does that translate? Is it like you role modeling, sharing knowledge, and sharing uh, between the public and private? How does it actually concretely manifest itself? Yeah, what we have done is uh, we are trying, to, we have actually established a team, uh, which is uh, purely a partnership, not a contractual partnership, but in terms of how it physically manifests itself uh, between the a private party and ourselves as a public entity and we have projected that as a center of excellence as best practice uh, reflective of uh, the region in terms of how different things need to be tailor fit and that particular entity we call it program management office for obvious reasons it has actually even now three years into the program it has become a center of excellence in the sense that many countries from within the GCC in specific uh, they have been visiting us, they have been trying to understand what sort of dynamics we've been able to put in place uh, and how and why we have been so far so successful. Uh, so that's that's the objective that we have in order to establish a, a centre of excellence. And you're with Lisley Kelly and Javier Marcos here at Cranfield, so how are they helping in that process? I think significantly. Um, uh, when I initially um, contacted Cranfield for a DBA, in my own mind I was very sure as, as what I'm looking for and how it needs to be done, uh, obviously having no academic rigor attached to it. Um, Leslie Kelly, uh, Harvey and Javier Marcos, all three of them, uh, including uh, other faculty members, they've really helped me understand how to structure my thinking. Because uh, coming from an operational side, if you will, from, from the practice side of the world, and uh, having worked almost entire life, uh, my life in project and program management, I was quite confident in understanding the topic, uh, but purely from a practice viewpoint. 
uh, their help has been significant in trying to align that practical thinking, if you will, and, and in line with the academic requirements. Uh, so very, very helpful. It'd be great to catch up with you later on, Shazad. Thank you very much indeed for your time today. Sure thing. Thank you very much for having me.